Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I'm still going to finish the uh, Stone series, God willing, and the Hell series. Well, Jesus went it going to the heart of the earth, but uh, Hell does not seem to be a very popular subject. Never has been, probably never will be. Uh, this has been on the table for a long time, but I finally think I'm going to do it. There was a song called uh, by Jefferson Airplane, which became Starship, Jefferson Starship, uh, Gray Slick. Uh, let's see, who else? It was uh, David Freiberg. When you see the spelling B-E-R-G, it's the non-German spelling, B-U-R-G, is German for mountain. So Freiburg would mean, if it was German, it would mean free mountain. But it's the uh, same group of people as, well, David Freiburg, Great Slick, and Paul Cantor. Now, a cantor is a musical leader in a sin of Gog. And uh, they would be the music, the music leader. I've never met anybody named Cantor that was not of that particular group, if you catch my drift. So I'm trying not to say certain words so that uh, I get scrutiny from you know who. And uh, another video gets deleted. I'm getting tired of my videos being deleted. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to read the lyrics real fast for this song. This song was put out by Jefferson Airplane. It was called White Boy. White Boy. W-H-I-T-E. And it was produced in 1973. Now, if you don't know who Grace Lick is, she did uh, Somebody to Love, the song, uh, White Rabbit, uh... We built this city on rock and roll. That was in the 80s. Uh, but Jefferson Airplane was big in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. They were part of the San Francisco psychedelic drug music culture. I was very young during this time. I grew up at the very, very tail end when the hippie era was dying. So... Uh, but this was around that time period when people were dropping LSD and mushrooms and uh, mescaline and yeah, for psychedelics and all that good stuff. I could tell you stories, but it doesn't glorify Christ. So, all right. Uh, 1973, I was, uh, around that time I was in high school. Yeah. And I don't remember ever hearing this song. I've only discovered it just recently. So, uh, so let's, let's read it. White boy. Hey, white boy. Where will you go? What will you do? What will you see when your night is through? What can you do? Where will you go? When the people of this planet send you away from here, my boy. Where do you come from, white boy? What is your land? Everybody else knows where they came from. You don't know your place. You never did. You never can. You can't find a place in this land. Blacks and Reds and Apaches and Jews all know where they came from. Uh, they come from, but you don't seem to know. Baby, do you understand? You appeared in the Caucasus Mountains, the southern Russia of now, and you spread your peculiar form of death from Mexico to Moscow. You surprised the Europeans, the Egyptian too. All of a sudden you appeared on their land. You made mountains for the Incas, 
built pyramids for the Pharaoh man, and you grew and you lived by their hands. Blacks and Reds and Apaches and Jews all know where they come from, but you don't seem to know. Baby, do you understand? Viking, Roman, fair hair, Alexander, emperor, slave. Do you come from the earth? Do you come from the sky? Nobody seems to know. You build and you burn, create and destroy. You rule me now, fair-skinned man, with an unfair hand. Where did you come from? Where were you born? Where were you living when the earth was formed? What can you do? Where will you go when the people of this planet send you away from here, my boy? Hmm, very interesting. I think we need to take a look at this and uh, it is kind of prophetic if you ask me. They know more about who we are than we do at times. I'm speaking of the general population, that is. All right, let's take this and apply some Bible stuff to it. White boy, where will you go? What will you do? Well, the most important question anybody could ever have if you are a sheep and not a goat, and Jesus is the shepherd of the sheep, in 1 John 5, 12, Jesus said, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. Very interesting, huh? So... In 1 John 2.23, Whosoever denieth the Son, not the Son in the sky, the Son of God, S-O-N, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Okay. So, where will you go? What will you do? You're going to go to hell? Or are you going to go into eternal life through Christ. Second line, what will you see when your night is through? See, they're saying that we are in darkness. I mean, night is darkness, right? Oh, yeah. In John chapter 12 and verse 46, Jesus says, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. See, when we don't have Christ, we are abiding in darkness, just like the song is saying. Now, next, next, next sentence. What can you do? Where will you go? Well, heaven or hell, people. When the people of this planet send you away from here, my boy, why are the people of this planet going to send us away from here? Uh, I'll guarantee you they're not going to build us a spaceship to leave. They're going to send us away from here by ending our physical existence here. Where is this mentioned? Let's read Matthew 24. Now, I have an entire playlist on Matthew 24 where I break this down and make many other Bible references. Matthew 24 ties into Revelation uh, and Daniel and a few other things, uh, minor prophets. So let's read Matthew 24 real fast. And if you want a more in-depth study, well, go to my playlist on Tube. Matthew 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Hey, Jesus, look at this magnificent building here. It's probably what they're saying. 
Verse 2. Uh, and Jesus said unto them, See not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And of course, the you-know-whos tell you that the wailing wall is part of the temple. But they are, by saying that, they're calling Jesus a liar. But guess what? In 70 AD, the Romans came and surrounded Jerusalem and invaded it and destroyed, burned it. And the temple was leveled. Absolutely leveled. So you could either believe the Wailing Wall or you could believe Jesus. I pick Jesus, but hey, that's just me. Verse 3. And as he, Jesus, sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? If you listen to the pre-trib rapture Baptist, they'll tell you, Oh, there's no... It could happen at any second. Nobody will know when the when it's going to happen. There's not going to be any warning. But the disciples said, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, Jesus is going to give them an answer that tells you that the Baptists don't know what they're talking about because they listen to people like C.I. Schofield, a guy that dumped his wife and children for a, a floozy, I guess you could say, or a harlot. Let's use the Bible word, harlot. And the Bible says that he that provides not for his own has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Guy spent years and time in prison for fraud, but supposedly he got saved in prison. And when he sold hundreds of thousands of copies of his, quote, Bible, unquote. Did he support his wife and kids? No. He cheated his mother-in-law out of her life savings for some kind of uh, mortgage fraud. When he had the money, he could have repaid her. He never did. And this is, this is the pillar of dispensational theology that the average Baptist will tell you is a pillar of the faith. You go to a Baptist preacher rapture church, and the first thing they'll do is shove a Schofield Bible in your hand. Oh, this is what you need to study. And they'll tell you the Schofield notes belong right there next to the Bible. Matter of fact, read the notes. Don't read the Bible. Read the notes. So, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world, Jesus? Verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Pay attention. Don't let anybody deceive you. Like Schofield. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. If there's going to be famines, might be a good idea to have a little uh, stash put away, huh? Famines and pestilences, disease, and earthquakes in divers places. Divers means diverse. It's like diverse, you know, many different. Yeah. All these are the beginning of sorrows. This is just the introduction, people. Then shall they, the goats, then shall they deliver you, the Christians, the church, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Oh no, Jesus, you got it all wrong. The Baptist church says pre-trib rapture. You're wrong, Jesus. Well, that's they, they won't say that, but that is what they mean. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Oh yeah, people. 
when you read this uh, thing, uh, let's see. When they send you away from here, when the people of this planet send you away from here, my boy, boy, this is prophetic. It really is. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Verse 10, Matthew 24, 10. And then shall many be offended. They're talking about churchgoers here, not Christians, churchgoers. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting persecuted because I believe in Jesus? I didn't sign up for this. Oh, God, uh, my pastor told me I was going to be wealthy and healthy, and 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 all I had to do was say it, name it, and claim it, and 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 the pre-trib rapture, and I never have to suffer. After all, God loves the church. It's his bride, and, and Jesus is not a wife beater. I've heard all the arguments. I've been at this game over half my lifetime. Over 30 years I've been at this game. I know almost all their little tricks. Almost. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Church people will hate you. They already do. You ever been to a mega church? And start preaching about sin and wickedness? Boy, they hate that. Because they don't have the Spirit of Christ. They really don't. Verse 11, Matthew 24, 11, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Just turn on TBN or the 700 Club. And because iniquity shall abound... Sin's going to grow. The love of many shall wax cold. Verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Wow. But I was always told that once saved, always saved. I said a 30-second sinner's prayer, and the, and the pastor said, no matter what I do, I'm eternally secure. Once saved, always saved. God couldn't throw me in hell even if he wanted to. I've heard that lie before. But Jesus said you have to endure unto the end. The same shall be saved. Verse 14, Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye sh therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. What is that? I think it's going to be animal sacrifices in a rebuilt temple. And then the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast, sitting in the temple of God, proclaiming himself that he is God. And that's in Thessalonians. I think that's the abomination of desolation. But uh, animal sacrifices in the temple will be a denial of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Think about it. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. People, Revelation 12 tells you the future of the church is the wilderness. Read it sometime. Flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. When you see the man of sin sitting in, uh, in the temple proclaiming that he is God, don't go back to the house to grab anything. Flee to the wilderness, flee to the mountains, people. Seriously. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Ooh, winter's coming. I better go home and grab my coat. Uh-uh. Lord tells you not to do that. The Lord will provide if he wants you to. If not, you get your head cut off. 19. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. 
But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation. What is tribulation? Trouble. With a capital T. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. God has an elect. And of course, the modern Baptist church world will tell you that's the Antichrist. Those are God's elect. Those are his chosen people. The Antichrists are the Baptist God's chosen people that they call Jesus, you know. Verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, Miracles, people, insomuch that if it were possible, if they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Does this sound like a secret rapture? No. It's going to be like lightning lighting up the whole entire sky. Verse 28. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Uh, a lot of people don't know it, but eagles are also scavengers. And there's even a vulture called an eagle vulture. Believe it or not. 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. So what's going to happen? The sun's going to be dark and the moon's going to be dark. Stars falling from heaven. And there's going to be like an earthquake in the heavens. The powers of the heavens shall be shaken. These are going to be the signs before Christ's return. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Why are they mourning? Because they're going to be sorry that Christ is real and they're, they're going to end up in the flames. That's why they're going to be mourning. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Those that believe in Christ, they're not going to be mourning. They're going to be rejoicing. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Wow. I think we could stop right here. Well, let's skip down to Matthew 24, verse 36. But of that day, the second coming, an hour knoweth no man no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Jesus doesn't even know the day and hour of his return. 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Who was taken away? The wicked, they were taken away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. There shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. 
Uh, at the end of the flood, who was taken? The wicked were taken and drowned. Who was left? Noah and his eight, the eight souls that were on the ark. That's who was left. They were left behind. Everybody else was taken in the flood and drowned. Hmm. But pre-trib rapture liars will tell you it means the opposite of what it, uh, what it says. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Wow. <sighs> Verse 46. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Wow. <sighs> let's see. All right. Let's keep going here. All right, white boy. What will you see when your night is through? Darkness, right? What can you do? Where will you go when the people of this planet send you away from here? Great tribulation, people. Our people are going to be almost to the point of genocide. My boy. Where do you come from, white boy? What is your land? Wow. Uh, we came from the Garden of Eden. Do you know that the word Adam is a racial description? Did you know that? Yeah, it is. Really. Let's take a look at that real quick. You know, even the unsaved and churchgoers are beginning to notice the anti-white hatred everywhere. I used to support the um, Salvation Army, but uh, they did a thing where, oh, I don't know, uh, it was anti-white hatred. I mean, really? I was like, wow. You know, all the great minds of the Bible came from Europe and the United States and the United Kingdom. Every Bible scholar for the last, oh, I don't know, almost 2,000 years has been white. I cannot think of one Asian or black Bible scholar. Not one. So, why do they hate whites? Well, the Bible has the answer. Did you know that Jesus was white? In Revelation 1, and cha uh, verse 1, chapter 1 and verse 14, John was describing Jesus. It said, his head, his head and his hairs, not just his hair, but his head too, were white like wool, as white as snow. And of course, the Black Hebrews will say, oh, well, that's because his hair be woolly. It'll be woolly. No, it doesn't say his hair was woolly. It says his hair was white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, I used to think that was red. No. You ever look at a gas stove? Do you know what color a gas stove burns? Blue. Sapphire blue, right? I think fat sapphire blue. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Do you know somebody did a video of brass burning in a, service, a furnace? It burns kind of a whitish color with a brownish tint to it. Yeah. As if burned in a furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. In the book, Bible book, Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 10, my beloved, the church, is white, white and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousands. Among ten thousand. Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 7. 
her Nazarites, now remember, they called Jesus of Nazareth, remember? Samson was a Nazarite. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. We ain't talking about chocolate milk here, people. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. What happens to a white person when they're out in the sun? They turn red. Ruddy. Look up the word ruddy. It means reddish. Uh, it has reference to blush. Don't women put blush on their cheeks to make their cheeks look red and healthy? Because the white skin shows the blood. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. Do you know that the Hebrew word for Adam means to show blood in the face, to be able to flush or turn rosy, to be able to blush? Only white people can blush. Think about it. Only white people can blush. You ever hear somebody telling a dirty joke and the girl blushes? Yeah. Only one group of people. Why? Because we're sheep. In 1 Samuel 17, 42, And when Goliath, the Philistine, looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. Countenance means complexion, fair complexion. Oh, they'll tell you, oh, fair means beautiful. You ever heard that story about Snow White? Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Snow White. Not Snow Beautiful. Snow White. Ruddy means having a healthy reddish color, a ruddy complexion, rosy red blush, as in the Irish are ruddy. A fair countenance is a fair complexion. That does not mean black. So, I mean, come on, people. Who printed all the Bibles and built all the churches? Africa? No. Asia? No. Europe and the United States. Think about it. Every single time. All right, let's go back to this song. Where do you come from, white boy? What is your land? Uh, well, it was the Garden of Eden, but uh, we got kicked out of there, or at least our ancestors did. We went into the land of Canaan, and God let the Assyrians kick us out of there. Hmm. Everybody else knows where they came from. You don't know your place. You never did. You never can. You can't find a place in this land. Blacks and Reds and Apaches and Jews all know where they came from, but you don't seem to know. Baby, do you understand? Our people do not know who they are. Galatians 3.29 And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, children, and heirs of the promise. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. Next chorus. You appeared in the Caucasus Mountains, the southern of Russia now. Guess what? When Israel was taken into captivity by the Assyrians, before the Babylonian captivity of Judah, there were two kingdoms, the northern and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was like King Ahab and ruled from Samaria. The southern kingdom was Jerusalem, capital. The northern kingdom was taken to Assyria. And then, uh, I think a couple hundred years later, Jerusalem was taken and Judah by the Babylonians. Well, when that happened, the Babylonians conquered Assyria, and then Israel, according to history, went north. And if you look north of modern-day Palestine, guess what? guess what continent is there? Europe. In what is 
what uh, Turkey used to be called Greece, believe it or not. The capital was Constantinople until the peaceful, peace-loving Ottoman Turk Muslims went in and invaded and killed all the Christian Greeks. But there is a pass called the Caucasus Mountains. It's in southern Russia. That's where you get the word Caucasian. White people. Does that make sense to you now? You appeared in the Caucasus Mountains, the southern Russia of now, and you spread your peculiar form of death from Mexico to Moscow. Hmm. Uh, Mexico was the Aztecs. You know, the people that did human sacrifice and cannibalism? Oh, yeah. And guess what? The Spaniards put an end to that. And you spread your peculiar form of death from Mexico to Moscow. You surprise the Europeans, the Egyptian too. Hmm. All of a sudden you appeared on their land. Listen to this carefully. You made mountains for the Incas, built pyramids for the Pharaoh man. Who was in slavery in Egypt and helped build the pyramids. Israel. That's what the entire book of Exodus was about. Well, maybe not the whole thing, but yeah. Israel was in Egypt, was put to slavery, and built pyramids for Pharaoh. Didn't they? This very song is telling you that our ancestors were in Egypt and built the pyramids for Pharaoh. We were Israel in captivity in Egypt. Isn't that something? Next verse. And you grew and you lived by their hands, blacks and reds and Apaches and Jews, all know where they come from, but you don't seem to know. Baby, do you understand? Viking Roman fair hair Alexander, emperor slave. So we were the Vikings, we were the Romans, Alexander the Great. Next verse. Do you come from the earth? Do you come from the sky? Well, guess what? In, I think it's Genesis chapter 2, weren't, wasn't Adam created from the dust of the earth? Yeah. Nobody seems to know. You build and you burn, create and destroy. That's right. Whites have built civilization and they destroyed heathen cultures. The Indians of the United States before this place was America. We destroyed their culture and we built a civilization. Next 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 chorus. You rule me now, fair-skinned man, with an unfair hand. Oh, really? Where did you come from? Where were you born? Where were you living when the earth was formed? What can you do? Where will you go when the people of this planet send you away from here, my boy? Well, I hope to... Hope to the Lord that you uh, go to be with God's kingdom, to be with Jesus. That's what I'm hoping. So, you know, this is funny. I was, I didn't even, uh, around this time, I was, con I considered myself an atheist. Of course, when I was in junior high school, I believed in Jesus, but the uh, TV preachers and my desire to live in sin helped get rid of that. But, um, uh, Around this time, I considered myself an atheist. But it's funny, you know, you find this song all the way back then. And, uh, you know, it's even there's hints that they know who we are, but we don't know who we are. And this song is roughly 50 years old, believe it or not. So, what does that tell you? 
I hope you enjoy this Bible study so kind of, sort of. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.